Stardew Valley 1.6 is officially out and the changelog is massive. I won't cover every little detail in this video alone, especially things like bug fixes since those aren't exactly groundbreaking news. That said, today we're going to discuss all the amazing huge additions that Concerned Ape blessed us with. Also, I'm sorry if I sound a little bit off, I am a little bit of a sick lad, but I obviously wouldn't miss this update for the world. So let's just shut up and dive straight into the patch notes. Oh, and obviously massive spoilers ahead, so if you'd rather see these things in game for yourself, because I am going to be showing some of them, then go away, <laughs> because I don't want to be the one that spoiled you. Okay, so first off, this update was honestly way bigger than I really thought it would be. I mean, I think we all knew that it was going to be big because he said so, but seriously, look how huge these patch notes are. So for this video, let's just look at all the like jaw dropping new things and then we'll cover the smaller changes in another video. So first up, we absolutely have to talk about the new festivals. So first up, the Desert Festival is a major three day event in spring, which can be accessed only after the bus is repaired. I have to assume that this is similar to the night market since that's the only other multiple day event in the game, so that'll be super cool to check out. I did a little digging and it looks like this event goes from the 15th of spring all the way to the 17th. All I know is that this can't be accessed unless you've already repaired the bus, and I haven't experienced this myself and I don't really want to, I want it to happen naturally, I just kinda walked in to grab some footage. But I do know that there are races, there's an egg merchant, all the villagers have different shops, there are some cactus that you can earn for your farm, fishing quests, a traveling cart, and a chef, and so much more. I just, I'm super excited to experience this one in game, which is why I tried to avoid the wiki, because I totally could give you a million different pieces of information on it, but I want to experience it myself first, and I'm sure you do too. So with that one out of the way, there are also two mini fishing festivals, the Trout Derby and Squid Fest. So far as of making this video, I actually got to experience the Trout Derby and it's a really cool little event and you will end up fishing literally the entire two days. So if that's your thing, then hell yeah. And if it's not, I'm sorry, I don't know what to tell you. I assume that Squid Fest is the same as Trout Derby. It was a two day little event. You got to fish for golden tags. You could turn those golden tags in and get a ton of different rewards. And off the bat, a couple of the rewards were new items. Right now, I know that Squid Fest takes place on the 12th and 13th of every winter, and the Trout Derby takes place on the 20th and 21st of summer. And finally, a new environmental event happens somewhere in summer. I really don't know what this means exactly, but I assume that it has to expand on cleaning up the valley and getting trash. So obviously as more gets discovered on these, I'll make videos or shorts covering all the cool little details on them since there's a lot to unpack here. But like I said right now, I want to experience it myself and I'm sure you do too, so those will be coming in the future. Next up, a mastery system was added, which is accessed through a new area, and this grants powerful perks and items. We knew there was going to be an expansion to skills, so I assume that this is it right here. It'll be very fun to check all of this out. There are five things to master which align with the five skills in the game, but right now I'm not sure what the rewards are for mastering them. And once you've reached mastery in all five of those skills, you'll be forced to pick some kind of permanent bonus, sort of like how you do when you reach levels 5 and 10. Again, this is huge and it definitely requires a video of its own, but off the bat this is really exciting and hopefully adds some really cool bonuses for endgame. Another major addition is the new farm type which was revealed to be the Meadowlands farm. So this farm is kind of crazy. It has a chewy blue grass that animals love, which you can see right here. This blue grass boosts the heart levels of your farm animals twice as quickly, which obviously leads to quicker production of high quality foods. You also start with a coop and two chickens on this farm, which is kind of crazy because that's a major boost to your money making early game. So it kind of just seems like this farm gives you a lot of potential to just maximize the amount of money you earn as quickly as possible. And personally, I'm definitely going to be doing my next run on this farm. 
Next up, a whole bunch of new NPC dialogue was added. This includes custom gift reactions, dynamic dialogue to things that happened around the valley, custom flower dance acceptance dialogue, and way, way more. To me, this is huge because in any game with dialogue, I think we all know it gets a little bit stale and kind of takes you out of the game when the NPCs sort of just repeat things. So giving more dynamic options to their speech is going to be awesome and it'll make the characters feel way more alive, which obviously is a good thing. That paired with things like their new outfits for winter really just give each character more personality and makes them feel more whole. On top of this, you can also get multiple pets, and the way that you can achieve that is by getting max hearts with your starter pet. To me, this is fantastic news. If you didn't know, I am such a big animal person, so having more pets is right up my alley. Right now, I'm not sure how many pets you can have, I'm sure there is a maximum, but I adore the pets in this game, so this is seriously such a cool addition. And while we're speaking of pets, this update added two new cat and dog breeds to choose from, and added turtles as pets, which is just so fantastic. And like was teased before the update came out, you can put hats on your pets now, and pets that love you will sometimes give you gifts. So it's just clear that pets as a whole got a huge rework in this update, and I could not be more happy about it. I think it would be cool if dogs could maybe bring you things like bone artifacts and cats could bring you fish. But we'll just have to wait and see what all the gifts are as the community discovers what they are. So a couple more additions, festivals now have a map and dialogue changes every second year except the night market and desert festival. I'm not entirely sure what this one means but to me it sounds like the festivals either aren't gonna be in the same place like for example the Halloween event because the maze is the same every single year so maybe that changes a little. Not too sure but we'll just have to see. Speaking of events, this update also made redoing the competitive ones way more meaningful by adding a prize machine in Lewis's house. So you can collect these prize tickets as a reward for completing quests and special orders. You can also earn them from repeating egg hunts or ice festival wins. Hopefully the prizes are pretty cool, but uh, knowing Lewis, yeah, I don't know. There's also a bookseller who comes to town twice every season. So the bookseller, get this, they sell books. The bookseller appears twice every season on random dates that are marked on the calendar. And each time that they arrive, they sell a random assortment of books. You're also able to trade in any books that you have for a couple of different items that are pretty useful to you. The update added a big tree, which scared me when I first saw it because I had no idea that this thing was added at all, and I was really confused when there was just a giant tree next to Marnie's house. I won't get too far into spoilers with this one, but it does have a quest line that follows after a random event, which ultimately gives you some new neighbors. It doesn't necessarily mean neighbors as in people. That's all I'll say for now. Also four new crops being carrots, summer squash, broccoli and powder melon, all of which can't be purchased at the store, which means you'll have to find them out in the wild. They kind of look like those little worm root things that you find lost books and artifacts in, just slightly different. There are also two new giant crops, which is like fantastic news. I've said it a million times in my other videos, but I love giant crops. They are fantastic. Give me more giant crops. And for those of you who love expanding and customizing your home, there are now four new home renovations, adding a dining room, an attic, an expanded corner room, and a cubby. Not to mention that there's also 280 new pieces of furniture, 41 new floor styles, and 24 new wallpapers. That is a lot, giving you so much more customization over your buildings. There's also a total of eight new achievements and 25 new hats, that said, for all you fishermen, there's a new fish type, the goby, and a new bobber machine in Willy's shop that has 39 bobber styles to choose from. You can unlock these new styles by catching different kinds of fish. Multiplayer also got a ton of love in this update. There are four new cabin variants, one of which is a literal trailer, which is so goofy. I love that one. You can also have up to eight players on PC. And most importantly, there have been major improvements for multiplayer performance and stability. 
which has been a problem for me and my friends since day one. And so far since the update, we have had zero problems. Some other huge news, the farmhouse and pet bull can now be moved through Robin's building menu, which might not sound like a major addition at first, but I promise you this is enormous news because it means you can finally have total customization over your farm. Plus, since this update has more pets, it allows you to purchase multiple pet bulls, so that's cool. And while we're talking about enormous news, Anning, which was like the laughing stock of all Stardew Valley activities, might actually be worth it now. You can upgrade the copper pan into steel, gold, and iridium pans, and from those you can enchant them with different enchantments like Archaeologist, Generous, Fisher, and Reaching. As of right now, I'm not 100% sure what each enchantment does, but you can probably make some educated guesses based on the names. And a couple things regarding the map, it's been redesigned, you and your friends update your positions in real time, and Ginger Island has its own map once you visit, finally. On top of everything else, there's also a whole bunch of new items, and just to name a couple, the big chest, the anvil, the fish smoker, the bait maker, statues, totems, and just way more. The list is honestly enormous, and once I have more details on all of them, I'll definitely be making some videos that go in depth on all of them, instead of just listing them out as additions in this video. A couple of other small but noteworthy additions. There are additional chests in the Skull Caverns at levels 200 and 300. If you're a big fan of Terraria, yes, I pronounce it like Terraria and not Terraria, I don't know, sue me. But anyways, they added the Meow Mir, which is so goofy and I'm not sure how you get it yet, but I really, really need this for myself. So on top of everything that I've just said in this video, there's also all the additions that we had already talked about and had been teased prior to the release of the update, and we covered all those in my other video. It should be showing up somewhere on screen around now. It's also important to note that this is not every change. There's still a whole bunch of quality of life additions, visual improvements, balance changes, and fixes, which I'll be making separate videos on since there's a lot to unpack for those as well. For now, that's going to wrap up every Stardew 1.6 major edition. I hope everyone who's gotten the chance to play 1.6 is enjoying it, and please, please, please feel free to let me know about any of the cool things that you've discovered in the comments. And as always, if you're interested in checking out the patch notes for yourself, I'll have that linked in the description. Thanks so much for sticking around until the end, and I will catch you in the next one. See ya!